Um, here's uh, something else. The other day, uh, I was in Chicago with a day off. And Chicago's a great city for a day off because there's lots of things to do. There's also lots of record stores. And if you're a record fanatic, Chicago, chances are you're going to find something good. So me and road manager Ward are uh, going in and out of every record store. And at one point, uh, the man behind the counter of one store says, what are you doing in town? I said, well, I got a show tomorrow night. Ah, well, what are you doing tonight? I said, well, you know, we're here with you. We're looking at records. Ah, well, you know, Van Halen's playing tonight. Yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting. The historic reunion of David Lee Roth and the Van Halen brothers, Eddie Van Halen's son, Wolfgang on bass. Pretty interesting. A lot of people are talking about it. A few tickets are being sold, a few thousand tickets a second. And um, not knowing how road manager Ward feels about the Van Halen. And you have to be careful how you throw out your opinion of the Van Halen. Because if you say, like, what do you think of Van Halen? Some people take that as an insult. Oh, what, you think I am like Mr. Lowest Common Denominator? I have taste in music. I don't listen to, to music that is uh, listened to by beer enthusiasts who wake up every morning with a baseball cap on backwards. Uh, and so I said, so Ward, what do you think of the Van Halen? You know, and I didn't let him know how I feel about the Van Halen, nor have I told you how I feel about the Van Halen. You know, I'm neutral on the Van Halen. I, I threw that out there for Ward, and he said, oh, yeah, they're great. I went, oh, so you like the Van Halen? He went, yeah. I went, well, me too. <laughs> and so I said, um, would you be interested in trying to go to that show tonight? Yeah. And the guy said, well, it's sold out. I said, like, that's going to stop us. And so uh, we make some calls, and uh, two tickets magically fall off the back of a truck, and, uh, and we go. And um, I have an interesting kind of weird history with the Van Halen. In about 1451, the year, I was young. It's good. And I was living in Washington, D.C. It's where I come from. And it was before I, I had my radar on for the punk rock. And if I did have my radar on for it, I would have been too young to sneak into the shows anyway. But I knew it didn't stop a lot of people I grew up with. They saw some amazing shows because they had the, 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 the idea of sneaking into a place. Not me. I was on the straight and narrow. And so I would walk by bars at night coming back from work you know, or some job I had. And I'd hear music coming out of the clubs. But it was like mainly cover bands playing like what was on Top 40 radio. And it's not interesting for me to sneak into a place where scary bikers are drinking flat beer to hear a band drunkenly play Aerosmith. So instead, for $8.50, I would go see Aerosmith when Walk This Way was the single, not some classic rock song on your satellite dish setting. And so I would go see these shows and have big fun. And uh, you would sit 800 yards away from the band and you, all you heard was like, and you swore it was great. And you'd come out smelling of beer, arena weed, and tobacco with like in your ears for half a week. And it was fun. And so that was music of my, you know, my early teenage years. A young person could, you know, throw out some money and go see a show. Uh, the best show we would see every year would be Ted Nugent. And on this night, the Nuge has an opening band called Van Halen. And so Van Halen runs out on stage. And they play a few songs. None of them suck. Everyone goes like, wow, that was pretty damn good. Who are they? And a few songs in, the singer starts talking, and he seems to be like a peroxided Mark Twain. He can really turn a phrase, and it becomes evident that the singer in the band doesn't seem to understand that we're not all there to see him. And he doesn't seem to know that he's in the opening band. It seems to be that he's in the headlining band, and we're all there. It's nice to be back in Largo, Maryland. Nice to be back. He's never been here before. What the fuck is he talking about? But it was awesome. And a few songs in after that, uh, the band runs off stage, with the exception of Eddie Van Halen, who comes to the front of the stage and delivers uh, uh, unto all of us uh, Eruption, this big solo from the first album. And he does this amazing thing, and he comes to the end of it and he stands in front of all of us and he holds his hands up and looks at them like I can't believe these things look at them will ya and he steps back from where he was standing and looks at where he was just standing like he was now looking at his aura he's now looking at himself in the third person James Brown used to say jump back I gotta kiss myself that's what Eddie Van Halen was doing he's just like damn and if it was anyone else doing anything less amazing, everyone would have like thrown chairs at him. But all you heard after he did the solo was 18,000 jaws go because it was pretty damn amazing. And then everyone kind of went, oh, yes, whoa, huge applause. The band runs back on stage and they finish the set. And everyone kind of looked at each other and went, well, 
geez, that was a pretty strong opening band. Like, wow, that was cool. And so a few years after that, uh, my life is very different. I'm in Black Flag. I live in Los Angeles. And one night, I'm hanging out with the great Raymond Pettibone, who's the, uh, the artist who did all the cover art for Black Flag. And now he's Raymond Pettibone, the internationally renowned artist of, you know, he's great, very famous. There's books written about him. I just know him as Ray, my pal from down the street from back in the day. And many years ago, I'm living on his mother's floor. And so I'm hanging out with him one night. And he says, uh, I had to go into Hollywood and uh, drop off some artwork at a gallery. You, you, you can come along if you want. Which means, please come with me. And uh, Ray's not really a people person. So I said, yeah, I'll, I'll get in your car. We'll go to Hollywood. And, and you know, they got you know, running water and everything there. And so we go into Hollywood. And we go into a gallery called the Zero One Gallery. And people are hanging out, kind of you know, half hipster place, half art gallery. And I go, Ray, you, you stay here. I'll take the art. I'll find the owner. And I'll, I'll get the art to the guy. All right, you go. Oh, that's fine. And he stands in the, in the corner. And uh, I find the guy who runs the joint. I said, hey, uh, I'm here with Ray, the artist. Um, Ray, say hello. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't have to say. <laughs> okay, it's cool. And I said, here's Ray's art, and I guess you, you know what you, yeah, he's going to pick it up in two weeks. Fantastic. And so I, I go, well, uh, great. And I, I'm walking away, and I'm walking through this crowd of cool people, and I see an odd couple standing apart. Uh, it's a man in a blue business suit who kind of looks like Secret Service. He's a big guy, and he's standing with his arms crossed, like, looking around, always roving, always wary, heightened, heightened awareness at all times. And standing next to him is a guy in a leather jacket, a baseball cap, dirty blonde hair, and sunglasses, kind of trying to look low key. And there's a weird couple, because they're shoulder to shoulder. Like, they dating? Yeah, well, why not? Uh, and so I'm walking by them, and at that moment, a beautiful punk rock girl walks between the two guys and myself, and we all look at her. And so the girl walks by, and I look at her, and the guy with the sunglasses pulls the sunglasses down like a quarter inch so you can see the top of his eyes, and he clocks the female. Then he looks back at me and raises his eyebrow like, huh, huh? And I'm pretty uptight. I, you know, I basically said, well, yes, she's very attractive. Uh, yes, uh, her buttocks are very... Uh, like fruit. Yes. And so I walk by him towards Ray, and all of a sudden the guy pulls his sunglasses all the way down his nose, and he goes, Black flag, right? And I went, Yes. And he pulls the sunglasses off, he says, Diamond David Lee Roth. I was like, Holy fuck, you're the Van Halen guy! <laughs> and so I said, What the fuck? He goes, like, Want a beer, babe? And at the moment, the giant comes to life. This man rips his jacket open and produces a can of Budweiser from his breast pocket. I said, no thanks. I was like, damn. He's like, pretty cool, huh? I was like, that was pretty cool, actually. Because the guy said not a word. He went right back to like, mm. And David Lee said, what's the matter? Got school tomorrow. Wow, wee, wee, wee. I said, no, I don't drink beer. I don't do anything. He said, all right, so we get to talking. And I said, you know, Dave, I got to tell you, man, a few years ago, I was living in Washington, D.C., and I saw you guys fairly hand Ted Nugent his head. And, and I didn't think it could be done. I didn't think an opening band, you know, could really do that. And boy, you guys really laid a number on that guy. And it was a wonderful thing to behold. And I've always wanted to meet you to tell you that, basically. Henry, I believe that gig was September 17th, 1978, with a gross ticket sales of 15,978 people, giving us a total gross of over $225,000 on that particular evening. I think the mighty Van Halen sold about 1,131 t-shirts, giving us a total gross of about $70,000, Henry. How the fuck do you remember all that stuff? What I remember, I talk about. What I don't remember, I make up and mix in. Sounds pretty impressive, right? Wow! I said, fuck, I'm loving this. And so we talk a little more, and I said, well, what are you doing at the Zero One Gallery? Someone has to co-own the art gallery, Henry. Wow! And I said, oh, well, I'm, I'm here with Ray Pettibone, you know, the artist. Ray's amazing! Where is Ray? I go, right over there. Hey, Ray, I'm Dave! Oh, that's fine. Oh, okay. I go, okay, well, I gotta, you know, I gotta go hang out with Ray, but uh, Dave, man, it's an honor to meet you, man. Henry, the honor was all mine. I was like, all right. And so... I go to Ray, oh, that's fucking David Lee Roth. I don't care. I, you know, it's just, 
he listens to Miles. He's not into it. And so we get in the car and we drive back to the beach, and that was it. And so a, a few years later, I ran into David Lee Roth here, here, and here. And so that's how we procured tickets. So anyway, we go to the Xerox Center where the gig is happening. Uh, corporations have bought all the pavilions and uh, massive stadiums in America now. It's now the Enron Center, uh, the, the Halliburton Pavilion, uh, where they used to be named after football coaches, men who invented the uh, artificial kneecap and things like this. Now it's just like, you know, the, the anonymous center, the 7-Eleven pavilion. And so we take a taxi to like the, uh, the, uh, the insurrection center, whatever the fuck it was. And so we're now standing in line at Will Call to get our tickets. And on this evening, I found out that I'm famous because people are coming up, they recognize and they're like, they can't even form words. Like, oh, 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 I, thank you. And it, it sends a sound to other people. Ooh, uh, and now there's a circle around me, like, oh, ah, uh, and they pull out a phone, like, which means let's do a drunken cell phone cam shot, like, sure. <laughs> Complete darkness. Oh, and so we get the tickets, and we go in, and everyone is in a very festive mood. People are like, yeah, Van Halen, people are so excited. And I was very impressed for an 8.30 stage time, Van Halen hit stage at 8.29. I thought that was cool. And so they hit stage, they open with You Really Got Me, the crowd's on their feet, me included, my fists are in the air, and hitting, hearing Eddie Van Halen play live, it's a beautiful thing, he's a great player. And so David Lee Roth's raps have not diminished over time. I am the Niagara of Viagra. I'm on stage with three Van Halens. Two incredible, one inevitable. Wow! Woo, woo. And at one point he goes like, turn on the lights so I can see all the people here tonight. And the interrogation lights come on. And the whole place is bathed like, like a thousand suns and you can see all the way up to the top you know 18,000 people in this place crammed the seats at the top are taking people's heads are hitting the roof they're, they're breathing out of O2 masks you know Sherpa guys are taking people to their seats it's way the fuck up there and, and, and so he looks around at all the people and I look around at all the people and I get to see who I share a country with I live in like the fattest fucking country on earth and I see 18,000 people, and most of them seem to be eating. They're eating as if their lives depend on it, because most of them have bought arena food. Uh, and on this evening, it's a five-inch diameter corn tortilla chips with that uh, really awful cheese-like rubbery substance that you just kind of... And uh, you put the salsa on top, and you eat it as quickly as you can, because if you don't eat it before it cools, it goes back to its original shape, density, and viscosity, and it becomes inedible, unchewable, and undigestible. So, and so you see these people eating like they're going to win a prize if they consume all of it in 60 seconds or less. And this stuff doesn't really digest uh, through your gastrointestinal tract. Uh, basically, the, the, uh, what it breaks down to is a bunch of cells. And if you put it under the microscope, I have. If you look at the cells, they look like, like this fat-ass refrigerator repairman with their pants halfway down with an obscene, hairy four inches of ass crack looking back at you. And they attach themselves to the inside of the arteries. And they just like, grab on, they stick their ass out in the middle of the artery. And there's so many of them, the blood cells cannot get through. Like, pardon me, I really need to get down. Fuck you, I'm the fat ass, I'm not leaving. No, you, we're going to die if I don't get down to the heart. Fuck it! I don't care. I have a shelf life of 9,000 years. <laughs> Dow Chemical made me. And so, these people are like, I don't want to live, I don't want to live, I'm eating, so I don't want to live. And so they're, they're trying to make good on their $150 plus ticket. So they're eating and rocking at the same time. And of course, all these Van Halen songs are now American hymns and everyone knows them. And so people are like, whoa, 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 the devil. And on any hard or semi-hard consonant sound, food, a barely masticated beer, bong spit, and water come flying out of people's mouths and the people below are peppered with chewed food and all kinds of other uh, just particles and you see it like you see spraying all, and like you, I'm feeling like ah oh, what the fuck and it's like whole families are there now because Van Halen fans now breed and they're now taking their children see see what we used to do like what and so 
that was the show. And like you come out covered with food, the arena air smells like vomit, marijuana, food, beer, and, and, and sadness. And it was a fun time, but it was just, you, I see my country and, and I see how we scare the rest of the world. And I came up with an idea to end the war in Iraq. Take out the Blackwater mercenaries, take them out now. Take out all the uh, coalition, the, the, the coalition of the willing, all the soldiers, bring them back to their wonderful families. And by the truckload, by the plane load, take Van Halen fans and put them, uh, millions of them, put them all over Iraq. Just drop, just go, 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 go. And send over millions of tons of cordon, tortilla chips, massive cheese dispensers, and lots of bowls, and Van Halen to play over and over. And you tell the Iraqi people, if you don't cool the fuck out, we're not taking them back. We're not building the southern wall around Mexico and the virtual fence around Canada to keep Canadians and Mexicans out. It's there to keep the Americans in Iraq from coming back if you keep fucking around. So we're gonna leave these portisans and when they clog those up, they're coming to fuck up your toilets and run up your phone bill and break your stereo. So keep it up, pal. And these 83 million Van Halen fans are never gonna leave. Look, here's videotapes of them shitting on their own living room carpets. That's the kind of people they are. You want some of that? No! No, 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 no! I didn't think so. And it's a war that ends with no bullets fired, just a little bit of rock and roll and some corn chips. Oh. So, it's just an idea. But, um, 